I'm gonna show you how to take foam board, fiber mesh, and make some cool shower panels. Stay tuned and enjoy the video. All right, so when you're using half inch foam, you wanna make sure that you peel both sides of this plastic. Because if you don't and you pour on top of this, the epoxy is gonna come right off because it's gonna act like Tyvek tape or anything like that. So the side that you're gonna pour, I would peel it off. Both sides would make it better. You're only gonna find the film on half inch foam. You won't find it on one inch. I'm taking measurements from the ceiling across the wall. We're gonna have the panel come out maybe an inch over the top, past the wall, so we can cover up the seam. And also we're gonna jog it back and let it ride on the inside of the tile. So we're gonna make this little cut here. That way the reveal is a lot better. So we've taken measurements. We're gonna go cut the foam and then Let's see how it fits and then we'll make some mods after that. After we get this one set how we like it, we're gonna come back to the next shower panel and then we'll tackle the one on the right side. So all I did was I came in here and I wanted to make sure my first cut was floor to ceiling and now I'm gonna come back on the second mark that I put. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off. Um, then we can come and dry fit it again. On this panel, we came back and we fit it how we like it. Um, there's a couple corners because the walls and the ceiling aren't straight. I'm gonna go ahead and use this as a template and I'm gonna trace it out on another piece of foam and then just get it to exact. That way we don't have a whole bunch of silicone on the top of this piece and it'll look kind of ugly. So I want it to be as precise as possible. So we're just gonna do that. We're just gonna take it um, and put it on another sheet and then that way it's perfect. Um, then I don't have to worry about it. That's one thing that you want to think about maybe having a couple other extra sheets when you're doing this um, in case the walls are really crooked. That'll give you something that you can uh, fall back on. You don't have to go back to the store. Uh, with regular countertops, I'll use the temp templating material, but with the showers, I like to use the foam. I like to cut it. I like to make sure um, that there's no surprises after you uh, do these big panels and it's going to save you time on insulation. So fun fact. So as you can see here with this diagram, I'll be able to write all my measurements on the foam and cut once and then that way I don't make a cut and then have to come back into the bathroom and check everything. I've made all my measurements that I thought that will be relevant and then we'll do some tweaks from there. Okay, so I'm using the top pieces, the one we had inside that we made our template. And now all I'm doing is transferring the holes from the old piece to the new piece without having to remeasure them. I can just put them on the top, use the a hole saw and pop them in and out. Voila. So we're cutting this out so it goes over the tile and then it covers up our seam and the sheetrock. So that's why we have an offset. All right, so the reason why I bevel this is so when you lay it up against the wall, it's gonna be uh, easier to get that that right corner up against the the ceiling, it'll let it fall over and it'll be a nice fit. Now let's go cut the other one. We can leave this be. So now that we got this in here, I think we figured out how we're gonna do this, the way this niche is, because we're gonna put a shelf somewhere about this high. Um, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna cut some three inch strips. Um, this is gonna be three by 15. It's gonna go all the way across. Um, then we're gonna put our sides in. That's gonna give us a square cut. So when we make the ledge um, or the seal, it's gonna be a straight cut to come off the front. And then we'll put the, the 
the shelf somewhere right in here. Okay, now that we've mocked up the niche, we've template the shower, the seal. This is gonna be out of MedX, and we're gonna encapsulate this with uh, epoxy. And the same thing with this shelf, it's gonna be made out of MedX, half inch. So everything mocks up real nice. Now what we'll do is we'll take it back to the shop. <coughs> we are gonna, uh, to make these edges, um, nice and smooth is we're going to inlay um, wood on the inside. That way when we router this edge, you're going to have a nice pretty edge. We're going to have to come in with Medex four inches on the inside so the enclosure, the glass enclosure, can have something to screw into. So we're going to do it on each side of the shower. As you can see here, that'll have a piece of Medex encapsulated in epoxy. That way that's all good to go. We're gonna trace this out, and then I'm gonna measure five inches over, cut that in, then cut the foam out, and then glue it together. So what we're doing right now is we're putting the glue to glue these two pieces together. What I found on that last one is the first coat really soaks in to the wood. So we're gonna put two coats of glue and I try to stay on that same bead that I put earlier. That way it doesn't soak in as fast. And then what we'll do is we'll put the activator on the foam and see how that works out. Okay, so now we're gonna take this off and then we're gonna cut a piece and inlay it here because we're gonna have the shower handle, the adjustment. The bar is 32 inches and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a four inch piece, 36 inches, and I'm gonna go about four foot from the floor and then I'm gonna put a piece in here 36 inches. I think that'll be good because what we can do is just cut another four inch strip. We'll put the center where the stud's gonna go at two inches so we can come in two inches. So that's gonna give me that little strip and that'll help give uh, this a nailer right here. That way they have something to mount that uh, the shower head on. All right, now we got the panel flipped over and so I had an idea. The way I'm gonna keep the quick coat contained is I'm gonna tape off the backside of this piece that I cut out for the brace. So all I'm gonna do is just cut pieces of tape and tape them and see how that works. It should hold it really good. Since the other one uh, taped up really nice and uh, I like the way it turned out, I'm gonna go ahead and reinforce this piece uh, and see how that works out. Okay, now that we got everything inside, uh, as you can see, we have it laid down. One thing I wanna recommend that you make sure that you have something that's a solid surface underneath your project because if you use uh, the little TPs or spray paint cans, it's not gonna work. Uh, the epoxy is gonna weigh down the foam and you're gonna have imperfections and you'll have some low spots. We found that out. So make sure that the, the surface is off the table. So we used another piece of one inch foam that's under here and we're just gonna raise it up and it's supported throughout the piece. Now we're not gonna have any problems. And then I just make sure on my front edge that it's sticking out just a little bit. That way if we have any runoff, you can still get your edges. We're gonna mix um, the quick coat, one ounce per square foot, and then once we have that mixed up, we're gonna lay it down um, on top of the panels, and then we're gonna put the fiber mesh on top. All right, so now that uh, we got this mixed up, I'm going to try to fill in these little cracks around here, around this niche. When you're using the quick coat, you gotta make sure that you're using, get this out as soon as possible.
Okay, now that the, uh, the quick coat has dried and we have all our edges, what we're gonna do is just take a utility knife and then just start trimming everything off and give it a nice clean edge. Right now I'm not really worried about the little pieces that are sticking out. I'm gonna come back with the sander and knock it off. All right, now that I got the edges sanded, I'm gonna go ahead and sand the top. That'll prep that for the painting, which is the next step. That's whatever undercoat you wanna put for your base before you pour the epoxy. So we'll sand this down and uh, we'll get ready for the next step. Now that I'm done sanding, you can see that there are some imperfections still in the piece, but don't worry about that because when we do our color coat, the amount of epoxy that we're using, it's gonna fill in all those little voids and make it nice and smooth and it'll be good to go. So uh, when you're doing this, don't fret on those little things right there. The, the epoxy for the next layer will take care of that. Stay tuned for part two of this series and we'll take you into the design process. If you like this video and you'd like to see more like it, let us know in the comments below. We would love to bring you more content like this. Also, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, hit the bell for future notifications. That way you will know every single time we post a video. Also subscribe to our channel. We're real close to 50,000 subscribers and we wanna thank everybody for subscribing and following our channel. We have a full line of epoxy products on our website, rk3designs.com. We do same day shipping as long as you make an order before noon. And we also do free shipping for all orders over $100. So check us out. All right, guys, you know what the routine is. Don't be scared. Move forward and be creative. See you next week.